All right, here's an update and forecast on Hurricane Hillary. Throughout the course of this video, we're mostly going to be focusing on the impacts Hurricane Hillary could have on California. Main thing that I'm going to say though, is that this storm is still a ways off and a lot can change as it moves closer towards California. So we're really just gonna have to wait and see and stay updated with this every single day. Now, as it does move up to California, First, it's going to strengthen from a category three that it's at right now into a category four, most likely. And then it's going to start to weaken as it pushes into the cooler water around California. And it won't be a hurricane by the time it gets into Southern California. I'd say the bigger question mark is if it will be a tropical storm. And this is the exact path that the National Hurricane Center is putting forward right now. So the M on this map, is going to be major hurricane and then you can see as it gets into central baja california it actually starts to weaken that's by 12 p.m on sunday at that point it goes from a major hurricane to just a hurricane again saying just a hurricane still means 74 to 110 mile per hour sustained winds major hurricane is going to be greater than 110 and last i checked hurricane hillary is at 110 miles per hour right now so we're just about to cross into that threshold where it is now a major hurricane. And then between 12 p.m. Sunday and 12 p.m. Monday, you can see it goes from a hurricane to D, which is less than 39 miles per hour. I believe that means tropical depression or disturbance, one of those two. But at that point, you can see it goes, it weakens as it goes into Southern California. So the question mark is if it will be a tropical storm as it goes over San Diego. Now looking at the different models, there is some variation between all the different models that we have out there. Some have the forecast track going a bit more to the west. Now if that happens, it actually could be worse for areas like San Diego and then central California because that's gonna bring more of the gusty winds, more of the rainfall and potentially flash flooding. If it moves more to the east, that does mean it's going to, I would say, weaken earlier, especially if it, if it goes over Baja, California. Once it's cut off from the water, it's going to lose a lot of its intensity, but that would lead to more impacts in the more central parts of Southern California. So still some variation right now. Hopefully as we get closer to the actual date, those models start to agree a lot more. Now this is also an interesting one to look at. This shows all the different models. And then on the x-axis, we have forecast hour. So one day out, two days out, three days out. And then we have wind speed and knots on the y-axis. So two of the models actually have it going up to a category five, 36 hours from now. Most of them I'd say are between category four and category three. But then you can see how all of them have this storm drastically decrease in intensity I'd say more than 48 hours from now. So in two days, the storm is gonna to start to weaken a lot. And that's as it gets into cooler water and as it pushes in over land. I think these two graphics sum up what's going on perfectly. Let's actually look at the one on the right first. This is your sea surface temperature anomaly. So what's the temperature of your sea surface now compared to where it usually is? And you can see much of Mexico, even into California, warmer than we normally are, and that's because of El Nino. During El Nino, you have a lot of warm water rush back to the Eastern Pacific. So you have warmer water, which creates more fuel for hurricanes. And then you also have less wind shear, which is why during El Nino years, you typically do see more hurricane activity off of Mexico. Now let's go over to this left chart, and this shows sea surface temperatures. And notice that yellow line right there. That's going to be the most important line to look at because that's where it goes from 80 degree water to less than 80 degree water where you have the green and blues as you get closer to California. Now the reason 80 degrees is kind of the magic number to remember when it comes to ocean temperature and hurricanes is because if the ocean temperature is more than 80 degrees, the storm is going to strengthen. And if the ocean temperature is less than 80 degrees, the storm is going to weaken. So as the storm is moving up Baja California, it's going to continue to strengthen, most likely into a category four. 
And then as it hits that yellow line, it's going to go into the water that's less than 80 degrees, and then it's going to start to weaken. Now, if it goes directly over Baja, California, that, that could actually lead to a quicker weakening of the system. We actually have some mountains in that area, which could really mess up the circulation of the storm, but most of the models have it staying over the water as it creeps up closer towards Southern California. But that's the reason it's not going to be a hurricane when it hits California it'll weaken into most likely a tropical storm or even less than that. So now let's actually look at the timing of what we can expect in Southern California. You're already starting to see some rainfall showing up Saturday morning, starting to see some heavy rainfall as you get into Saturday 2 p.m. And remember, this is before the storm even gets here. And we are looking at the GFS model right here. So the American model, I've heard a couple reports that people are saying the GFS is doing a bit better with the storm so far, although it does seem like its numbers may be a little bit exaggerated. So with this storm being a few days out, I'd say take a lot of what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but it's the best information that we have to work with at this time. So this is now getting into Sunday morning. You can see there's almost that brief period where it just goes back to some light to moderate rain. And then the storm starts to move in. Let's see the first heavy rain started showing up around 11 p.m. on Sunday, and then into 2 a.m. on Monday, and then 5 a.m. on Monday, according to the American model, is when the low is just to the west of San Diego, 988 millibars. And then where you see the yellow and orange color, that's where you're going to have your moderate to even heavy rainfall at times. And that's where you have some potential for flash flooding. Then also look at that band of heavy rain going all the way up into the central coast. And that's what's different about the GFS model versus the ECMWF or the European model. The GFS has it more to the west here. So you have more wind and rain impacts spread out over more of California. Whereas the European model has it moving more towards the central parts of Southern California. So you have more of your impacts on the Eastern part of the state. So that's one of the big question marks that we're thinking about moving forward. And then it looks like it kind of falls apart by about 8 p.m. on Monday with some of the rain then moving up into Northern California. So let's look at your rain totals that are expected with this system. San Diego, inch and a half to two inches. Los Angeles, around three. I believe the European model actually had Los Angeles at around four inches of rainfall. And then parts of the desert could be picking up as much rainfall over the course of maybe six to 12 hours to one to two days as they see in an entire year or even more rainfall than they see in some cases in two years. So that's where there's the potential for some flash flooding out there. And then there's also going to be some wind impacts. I think the larger impacts will be due to the rainfall though. And then right here you can see, this is the GFS again, so the American model at, uh, let's say 5 p.m. Sunday, you start to see some of the wind gusts pick up in San Diego. Then it's 40 miles per hour, 11 p.m. Sunday. These are wind gusts, not sustained winds. And then you start to see 56 mile per hour winds for San Diego, 53 for Oceanside, 5 a.m. Monday morning getting into 8 a.m. That's where you have 50 mile per hour gusts from San Diego all the way up to Los Angeles. And then it starts to weaken as you get into Monday evening. Now keep in mind with the European model, that's going to bring more of your gusty winds to the southeastern parts of California. So lots of question marks still up in the air, but right now we do have a large amount of warnings across California, the excessive, the heat advisory in the Central Valley, you have the red flag warning in Northern California, and then now the new one, all these flood watches starting to pop up for portions of Southern California due to all of the rain that's expected and some of the winds as well. So. I think this is one of those systems we're going to really have to just keep an eye on as it gets closer. Right now, just to sum it up, it looks like it's going to strengthen to a category four, and then it's going to weaken as it gets closer towards California, but it's still going to bring a large amount of rainfall, the potential for some flooding impacts, some very gusty winds. And then what I think is the biggest question mark is the impacts that it could have on wildfire danger. Will it bring so much rainfall that it brings a lot of moisture back into our fuels and really helps us out with wildfire? 
Or in Northern California, will it bring in just enough moisture that we get thunderstorms that bring some lightning and some thunderstorm activity, but then not as much rainfall, which could spark a lot of wildfires. So there's a pretty big spectrum of what could happen there in terms of wildfire danger. That's something I'm going to be watching closely over the next few days. So hopefully you learned something throughout the course of this video. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot to follow over the next few days.